you know, the end all, okay? So um, the way that this is done is um, the way that these maps are created, okay, um, is with what they call a high dynamic range image. Um, and I don't know if anybody knows about uh, the way high dynamic range images work, but when you make, when your phone takes a, a picture or, a, you know, a, a regular sort of camera takes an image, um, it has to smash all the information that it sees into you know about 16 million colors which seems like a lot but it, it believe it or not it, it's not right so what high dynamic range tries to do is it tries to capture like uh, essentially it's almost limitless right meaning you could have something as bright as the Sun and something as dark as the corner where there's barely any light uh, uh, getting so what that means is in your normal JPEG your uh, you know your TIFF and you know and, and things like that well, let's just stick with JPEG so in a normal JPEG it's a 24-bit image that means that there's eight bits per red green and blue and and what that means is it is it that's the sort of area that it has to work in, right? That's why if you take a picture outside sometimes, uh, but you were trying to take a picture of something in front of you, it's blown out and this is black, right? It's because there's only so many colors that a a you know most screens can can show you, right? So in reality, and you you know in a way your eyes do it too. It it, it they iris up and they iris down to see what you're trying to get a look at, right? So the you know, and that's all well and good when you're just trying to look at stuff, but when you're trying to sort of capture how light is working in an environment, that doesn't that doesn't work. You know, it just it just doesn't work because there's so much more going on. You know, you look up at the light, your eyes iris down, and then you can look at the light. But if you look over somewhere else, all of a sudden everything seems dark. You know, you come out of a theater because your eyes are iris way open, and all of a sudden you're blind, right? So it's that same kind of thing, right? So high dynamic range is made to you know, high dynamic range is not really an image as it is a sort of a data set of 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 an environment or or whatever it may be. Okay, so what that means is it's capturing the relative brightness between everything, if if taken properly, I should say, uh, of everything in in a scene. Right, meaning like it, you know, you can you can look at the lights and 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 get the sort of value that's that of the light that's coming out of there and all the way down to like a you know light that's coming out of smaller things and lights that's not coming out of anything but but sort of bouncing around okay because light is just energy that's being bounced around any environment and you know you can get into all that crap about you know how that all works and we we're not going to get into that but the the point is is that this is a way to describe that stuff right so what i've got up on the screen here is this is a, uh, a high dynamic range of a studio environment, right? So this is 360 degrees in around and up and down. So the the top um, is the ceiling, and you know, and the bottom is is the floor all the way around. So you know, the light that's coming out right over here and bouncing off of there wraps around to here. So if you take this thing, not only if you wrapped it around into a tube it, and, and then pinch the top, this is a 180, or 100 degree, 180 degrees up and down, 360 degrees all around, right? But the important thing here is that, you know, even though we're seeing this as an image, if I go in here and I add a exposure, you'll see uh, that there's a lot more information here, okay? so. If I, if I expose down and down and down, you, you notice how these are still lit. And in fact, you're starting to see new information here. See how this is really bright over here and this little dot. Whereas if I left it right there, it's just a blown out hunk of white, right? So, you know, if you took a regular camera and you shot this, this is maybe what it would give you to try and capture everything. Meaning there's some gray over here, this is really bright, and that's all it can do. So that's trying to wedge, so, you know, the, oops. So the idea is, is you know, if 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 you say this is the the sort of light spectrum of of energy from you know completely black to completely bright or kicking out a uh, kicking out a ton of light, an image on your screen it has to sort of pick a subset of that, right? It can show you this much, right? So that means if I shift this this way to try and get these things that are in shadow, okay. 
like in through here, it can do that, but that means, uh oh, I lost my, okay. That means that it's gonna lose what you're seeing here, right? So, so these, so cameras try and show you a, a subset of what is actually out there. So, you know, you could be down here if you wanted to, like if I went like this and I did that, it would give me this, but that means that all this dark information that's down here is gonna be thrown out because I sort of shifted my bracket of what, what we can see over to here so that I could get the light that's coming out of these lights or, or try and expose for that, right? And the same, and then the, this is sort of the opposite situation. If I wanted to see what the heck's back here, oh, I can't write on it. Uh, if I want to see what's back there and th that's falling into dark when I do this, see, this is completely black, okay? I'm obviously gonna blow not just this stuff out, I'm gonna blow all this stuff out. So this monitor can sh only show 24 bits at a time, uh, meaning that what some chunk of the visible spectrum that's inside this file, okay? The good news is, is that you, know, you don't really even need to worry about this too, you know, it, it just, the idea is to be aware of this, uh, that all this extra information is inside these kind of images. Like this is an EXR, like I talked about last week, and then EXR being a file format that can contain all kinds of stuff, um, meaning extra channels, extra amounts of data, whatever you want to call it, right? Um, but a lot of times you'll see this actually come in as uh, an HDR, high dynamic range image, okay? So a file format, you know, in fact, another one I have here, uh, so this is an HDR, so this is a softbox.hdr, okay? Um, they can cut, and they're both the same idea, basically, and, and the program will, ha will handle them both the same, all right? So what this is, is, like I said, what this is telling me is is I've got all this extra information. If I feed this into Maya and use this as a, as a source of light, I'll get a relative, you know, uh, um, I'll get values out of it relative to you know itself where where this is obviously very bright this is you know this this is very bright this is this is bright and then it'll go all the way up till you know this isn't uh okay so the the, the point is is that you know the computer or the, the 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 monitor here can only show me you know this little subset but maya can use all of this and you know that means that you know, all this stuff in the darkness down here is gonna sh is gonna do whatever it's gonna do, and and bright lights that are way up here, in the spectrum of you know energy, one hundred percent, zero percent, you know, absolute dark, and at whatever the brightest thing in the uh, scene is, okay, it can use all that stuff and put it into one of these these light domes that we saw last week, okay, and then project into your scene, just like the sky did with the little sun and all that stuff, right? And these things are all over the place. You can make them yourself. There's commercial ones, there's free ones out there, whatever you're trying to do. So they're, you know, one one really nice way to use them is is in a sort of a supplemental way in that like, so this is like a, a nice white studio. So if you're gonna shoot a car in here or something, like, or wanted to put a car in here, you know, you could, Put it in here, and you would, and it would act like this is the. Oh, I can't, I can't draw on it. Okay, um, it would, it would act like this is the default studio, and then I could add more of these kind of lights inside this, inside the scene, to do whatever lighting isn't uh, isn't captured in this thing because this you can't edit this. This is obviously this was shot like four years ago, so this is this is all gone, right? So. I'm, I'm just going to basically wire one up, and I'll show you what I mean, um, and you'll see what it can do. Um, so, like I said, you, you have ones that are flat that map onto a flat light. You have these the, these these ones that are um, you know panorama, not just panoramas, but uh, you know whole. I guess they do call it a panorama. So it's a you know like I said, 100, 180 degrees light light ball essentially, right? And like I said, there's lots of ways to grab these things. Uh, I just shot this with like a really big fish eye and then you stitch it all together and you know there's a bunch of stuff you got to do to get here but it's it's not impossible and it's getting easier all the time so so anyways so the beauty about this is that it's completely organic so if you throw an object in here it's gonna look like any other object thrown in the scene 
and lit in the exact same. It's, it, it's basically capturing the environment that it was on this day, just like this, with every little color and every little detail and this little, you know, whatever this little doohickey is up here in the ceiling. And, you know, they're just completely organic, you know. So if you wanted to, you know, make this, to have this to reflect onto your object, you obviously spend a bunch of time modeling lights that you can barely see and little raptors you can't see and who knows what's going on over here and you know all these light stands and all all this stuff right so the great thing about these is that that they're they add detail in there that just you can you don't you don't really even perceive it you know um but it's there you know you're you're you know look at the, the color that it casts down you can see it's it's actually a little blue you know um just just all that little stuff whatever the this stain thing on this floor, like you, like I said, you hopefully actually don't see this directly, but it's just there, and it just makes it, it adds texture, right? So, so these things are great, and you can you can do them inside a room, you can do them outside, you can you know on a mountaintop, you can whatever it may be, and you're capturing that environment, okay? So if I hop back over to Maya, and so I just brought I brought in a couple of objects, so this you know. So that, what I'm setting up here is essentially a little product shot here, right? So this is an Alexa and this is a little iPhone and that's uh, some kind of um, uh, Android dealy, right? So I'm going to get rid of my little set for now. So I have just a little uh, white backdrop set. You know, the, the idea being if you, you see some of these product shots, they, they look like this where they're just sort of hanging out and there's a little shadow here. And this is what they call white limbo because it, it, it curves up like this and it looks seamless you know white and basically white seamless so if i threw some light in here all i would get was white 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 and shadows uh on the object on the floor a little bit okay and that's how they get those clean you know those super clean uh product shots like this okay but what i'm going to do is just just um drop the uh you know drop the uh the the sky dome light in there and and essentially plug in that HDR to light the scene. So if I throw that guy in there, you know, we've seen this before. It's it's a big ball, okay? And it's it's shooting light from every single polygon in here, you know, in into the scene 300 180 degrees up and down, 360 degrees all around, okay? So when I throw this in here, what I get out of it is just white and so I'll do a quick render of this depending on the brightness and the slow, there we go. Okay. So you get, you know, you get this, this, you know, you, you get exactly what you'd expect. A lot of light all over the place because it's coming from every direction, some shadows and then some weirdness down there. I'm not, uh, oh, these are like chromey, so they're not showing up quite right. Okay. So, um, so to change that, you know, I, I, you know, we talked about how you can, color your lights if you want to. So if I, you know, if I messed with this and I I hit that or I hit render, I'm going to get an orangey everywhere light. Great. You know, hot dog, right? So and we'll cover more about this as we go, but essentially what these little checkerboard guys are next to any of these things are it's like a almost like a socket where you can plug up whatever you want into that, okay? And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna um, plug a, a texture into that, okay? So, you know, we'll circle back around to this, but what I'm what I'm gonna go do now is just, I'm, I'm gonna say, in, instead of a color, use this image mapped around this whole giant sphere and, and light it that way. So, when I click that, I get a new thing called AI image, Arnold image, okay? And then I just point and I go get it and downloads and here and hold on it's here somewhere where to go here it is so this is what we are looking at okay so it gives you a little preview over here of what it looks like okay and it's just like it you know it's gonna it doesn't show it to you but it maps it on this guy uh, or on the uh on this ball okay and you can rotate this if you don't like the way it shows up i'm actually gonna sh bump this up a bit it's giving you a little preview of what it's going to do to an object inside the scene, but it kind of looks like a slush or a snowball for some reason. So uh, the easiest way is just to render it out, and you should see. If it's not too bright, I might have pumped up the light too much. Uh.
takes a while to load that. It's it's actually a humongous file. The other the other thing about these uh, about a high dynamic range image is it can be uh, a real pig. Like this is uh, well, it's not too bad. It's eight. Oh, I see what happened here. So um, it's only nineteen megabytes, which isn't too bad. But um, Arnold actually goes through and reinterprets it into uh, what they call a TX file. It, that's um, uh, Arnold's internal texture file format that it likes. So okay, so if I come back here, you'll see I'm, I'm getting, you know, I'm getting reflections from those lights that were in the scene. I'm getting this kind of stuff. Um, you know, I'm getting sort of an organic scene. Uh, let me turn that up. Right. So I'm turning the resolution up here because if you come back over here to uh, uh, Photoshop where I'm looking at that or looking at this image, it's uh, it's pretty big. Yeah, four is so it's 4K across and 2K up, right? So if I come over here and I um, I go into Maya, uh, wait, where am I? Come back to Maya. Um, by default, it, it its resolution is set to a thousand. So it's assuming you're using a, a smaller image than I am here. So I, I kick this up to be the size of the uh, the actual image, and I'm gonna actually bump up the intensity a little bit and go for a re-render. It only has to inter reinterpret the file once, so um, you know that that pause that it did there. It's just reusing its file. Its file. There we go. So okay, so the, you know this is the only light that I have in the scene, and you know I'm getting some nice shadows. I'm getting uh, some really nice reflections. This just has like a shiny, uh, you know. Uh, shiny surface on it like chrome it's not actually surfaced out the the alex is actually the only thing that's that's truly surfaced out in here right so if i come back and i you know rotate this around you'll actually see how it the easiest way to aim these kind of things too is to throw what i usually do just, just so that you can sort of see what you're uh looking at here is just to throw a chrome ball in the scene right because this will reflect, you know, exactly the way that the uh, the HDR is pointing, right? So, uh, bum, bum. so I'm just grabbing a uh, a chromey surface to throw on there. Don't worry, we'll come back around to this like once again. <laughs> I'm just making a quick uh, chrome surface. Like I said, well, you know, we'll, this is sort of the next step. So I'm jumping ahead a little bit here. So just uh, ignore what I'm doing for the most part here. But we will come back to this. Okay, so now I have kind of a chrome ball versus you know the the, the sort of the plastic of the uh, of this guy and then the, the pretty crappy uh, chrome of this guy. So if I do another render, you'll you'll actually see where things are. pointed there we go so you can see like the 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 light that's out there out here you know that are is in the front part of the scene so it's actually sort of getting posed a bit better so it, it, it's it's pointing in into the scene which is exactly what I want so if I you know sort of look and look from behind I'll get a different do, 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 do. There we go. So you can actually see it. It does show up in the scene. Um, and it actually could be even brighter, it seems. Let me bump that up to 10, let's say. So, you know, after the fact, you'd go in here and you'd color correct this because it is it is a little green. It's like a little blue green, but, you know, just like any camera, you have to, you know, when you turn your white balance on this, you know, you, you, you make those changes to, to adapt to a, a lighting scenario. So this thing is sort of shot just as is and the and the lights themselves had a bit of a blue blue green cast and that's why it's in here so you know it's re it may not be pleasant but it's it's real it's realistic okay and there we go so you can actually see that you know this is where the lights are up up above here and you know and they're, you're getting these nice shadows and everything so it's a really nice way to 
at least start out you know i mean one thing i use is basically a, a studio and this is just for studio stuff there's there you, know, you can use one for outside that's a little you know like one where there's no sun and then you place your own sun like i was saying last week what i like about what, what i like to do with these is to use one that's a little cleaner and then place my own soft boxes okay so that's basically the same process and then if i come over here to my arnold and i grab um one of these which is, you know, I'm sorry, an area light, and then blow it out. Or, or, sorry, not blow it out, but make it bigger. Okay. So if I come over here, you'll see soft box. You know, if you haven't, if you have never seen this, this is what a soft box looks like in a studio, right? So this is what gives you those nice shadows. This is what they do product shots with. You, you look at Apple stuff, you know, it's all these nice, you know, little, uh, you know, soft box reflections on the objects. Okay, um, so this is what we're trying to mimic. If you're, you know, in this instance, um, you know, this applies for cars. This applies for any product shots. This applies for if you're trying to uh, make a portrait of a character that that you had. You you know, you would you'd grab a soft box, right? So by default, so if I come back here and I turn off the power on the outside light, or not the outside light, the the dome light that I have. And I render this guy. Uh, let me turn it up because I always need to turn it up. Uh, five and twelve, we'll call it. Do a quick render. What you'll see eventually. Okay, there we go. So you see, you know, you you see a very perfectly square light kicking off decent soft shadows. Um, good light sort of dispersed on the ground, you know, not too bad, right? It, it's not bad, but it could be better because, you know, this is just straight up a square with a bunch of light coming out of it. So there's nothing stopping me from remapping it, okay, with the softbox that I just so, showed you, right? And if I looked at this softbox, this is all that somebody did to make this, I didn't I didn't make this one, is um, Shoot a, shoot a real softbox in a studio as well that somebody did and you'll see if I if I expose ooh, what happened there? if I expose this one down you'll see how underneath there's these nice little you know uh, creases and you know it's not perfect all the way around you can actually see some of the support stuff inside you know so this is what I talk this is what I'm talking about when I say you know the little these little details, this is what's buried in, you know, when I open this up, it looks white and, you know, just feathered off, big deal. But what's underneath there, because we have so much extra information in this file, because it is an HDR and not just a JPEG, is all this great little stuff, okay? So if I plug that in over here in Maya, okay, and I come back down and I render it. I'll get something just slightly more organic than the than the original, you know, the black, or not the black, sorry, but the uh, perfectly white, perfectly square. Ooh, I'll get a very white. Well, let me turn it down. And I'll turn it down to two. That's still maybe too bright. Way too bright. Let's just IPR the sucker. Okay, there we go. So I turned on the IPR so that I can move it around. Okay. Okay, so if I zoom in here a little bit. So you'll see that. You'll see, you know, you'll see the variance here. This isn't perfectly uh, sharp so that it, you know, it is actually sort of, uh, you know, feathering it off more than you want, like like meaning this isn't really you know truly chromey, but this is just throwing a, a a variance into the scene that just gives it a little more realism. So these are you know they're pretty much always good to use, and you can get any you know any kind you like. You can get ones that are like I said for a flashlight. You know, if you've ever seen a, a game where they have a flashlight, you know, and the light comes out of it, you know, they throw one of these on there so they get that flashlight. Uh, you know, flashlight lens look, right? So if I go, uh, uh, throw maybe. Let's see if I can find a good example. Uh, 
yeah, I guess this is this is decent. You see how it's doing all this? This is all because it's refracting around through inside the little lens and all that stuff. So you know, if you if you put this in there, you'll you'll get these details, and you know, instead of just being a a, a boring circle, you'll get that one's pretty clean. Okay, so so they can like I said, they can be used to light any you know any any scene in any way. They can be used on flats like this. They can be used on, on spotlights. They can be used on uh, full dome lights, whatever you might need, everything, like I said, except for uh, uh, point lights because it's just a, a point of light, okay? So, I, like I said, I've got a couple of these that I'm just going to put out in the uh, directory to play with, um, and uh, they're really handy. Like I said, they're, they're very, very handy, okay? So, this is more of a light modifier is, is what I really call it, you know, meaning like we, we talked about these light types. We know what they do. Great. You know, hot dog. Uh, it's just a thing that you can add to these lights, and I definitely recommend that you do um, either collect, you know, collect them up or or whatever it may be, because they make life really easy. Because, you know, if I then came back here and I turn my studio back on, all right, and render this. So I've got my supplemental light here, and I kept this down a little bit. So I've got. A bunch of nice reflection coming out of my studio but and I can't control it because you know like we saw here it, it's it's just a, a big it's a quote-unquote image right I can't I can't move any of these things anymore I could paint these out of here but I get this all this stuff by default which you you know which would show up in reflections of objects a car uh, you know this, this kind of uh, these product shots whatever you want to call it but I can control these and I can place these anywhere I want interactively okay so when you combine the, the the two situation or the two situations of a ball to light things in in general and then the l extra lights that you want you start to get something that's a, a bit you know both controllable but realistic so you see the reflection over here you know you see some of it catching up here but if I wanted to put place highlights on my echo here, I, I have my this guy to to move around, right? So let me let me try IPR on the this, and let me I'm gonna mess with the uh, surface of the echo real quick. And it's awful diffuse, so I'm gonna sort of mess with the the way the plastic works. Uh, a little choky. Okay. Like I said, don't don't worry about this part. We'll, we'll you know this is our next step, but um, it, it is it's definitely our next step. But I gotta cover this stuff before we move on there. So okay, I'm gonna uh, you know uh, interactive render this guy so I can I can pose my my uh, highlights as soon as it gets its uh, shit together here okay so this 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 highlight right here is coming from this light right all this other stuff is all coming from either bouncing off of the set or it's coming from the the HDR right so if I move this light over here see I'm affecting my I think I'll do. I'm going to hide off the set because it's actually trying to uh, to uh, there we go. Sort of handling too much at once, so I'm just going to back that off. So, okay. So if I move the light, you see the change. See how I'm moving my highlight around. So this allows you to pose those kind of highlights. You know, if if this was like you know a human head or something like that that you know you, I would I, I think you see what I'm saying I'm getting all all of these nice reflections and everything from my little fake set but then I'm able to put lights where I want them and how I want them and everything so the combination of the two allow you to use both sort of organic lights all over the place without having to build a bunch of stuff you know I don't have to, don't have to build this set or anything but I can place the lights where I want them and get everything good that I get out of this thing being fake so see if I so like if I wanted to make sure that this was 
you know, tighter, I could just keep shrinking it. See, now, now I've got a, you know, a, a tighter uh, reflection right there, and I could make it go down the whole body. So the point here is that uh, that you can combine all these things, but it's like it's best to just go and find real deal stuff and let it do that kind of work, okay? Like I said, instead of build, building this little set and all this crap and hoping that it looks good, you know, like somewhere here it's picking up a little blue, bit of blue, right? Like this is the kind of thing that you wouldn't put in there and maybe it's not the kind of thing that you even want, right? So that's reflecting like this right here, you know? And that you'd never plan for, you know? You, you And like I said, you may not like it, but it's organic and it's real and it lends all this realism to you know any kind of object you threw in here if this was a car and you threw it in there and you were placing your lights you'd get all these great reflections and you place the ones that you want and boom it'd be extremely realistic and you'd be done with it uh, a, a character a head whatever if you you know if you're trying to make a portrait of a of some kind of character boom you got this real lighting okay okay so those are HDRs, and they come in a couple of flavors. You know, they come in both. Uh, they can be XRs. They can be uh, HDRs. They actually, actually can even be TIFFs. If you, uh, if you remember TIFFs, um, it's not something people use a lot, but um, they're out there, right? Uh, they can also be edited with certain programs. Like if, I, like I said, if I wanted to paint this out of here, I could paint this out of here. Um, you know, I could paint the spotlights out of here, whatever I wanted to do, but um, I like this the one the way that it is. And I think I made a version actually where I painted this out of there so I could paint, place my own lights with other mapping on top of them. So, so we've got our environment map doing, uh, doing the background. Then we have uh, our spotlight with its own map. You can have as many as you want. They can be different types, all, all kinds of stuff, okay? The environment map. So, like right now, you got rid of the thing that was your little. Yeah, I got rid of my set. Can you can you make it so that <clears throat> the map doesn't show up unless it's like reflected? Yeah, you can hide that. Yeah. Mm -hmm, like, uh, let's see here. You can you can call that out as as it doesn't render. Um, no behavior. Visibility. Visibility might kill it. It's so it's there, but it doesn't render. Oops, there it goes. It's either that or it's in its Arnold's uh, Arnold setup here. Development. I'll dig it out for you. But long story short, yes, you don't you don't have to see it. Okay, sure. Okay, so um, so that leads leads us into the the um, the individual components of, of what we're sort of trying to look at. And th this is where it sort of leads us into, like I said, either, you know, both the, the, the RD part of it or whatever you want to call it and the sort of observational and physical part of it um, that you have to be aware of as you, you design your lighting and you design your materials for objects, right? Um, and I think I said last week that, you know, by mashing this button, there's, you know, the, the render, the quick, the render button, you're getting a lot more than you sort of even even realize here. Um, there's a lot that Arnold is handling. That I'm gonna turn my set back on. Sorry. Oh, there it is. Uh, just show show selection. There's a lot going on here that that Arnold's handling for you um, by default. That you know we we do need to be aware of um, before we sort of go forward. Okay. And I'm gonna sort of I'm gonna break down the the different pieces of that. And how they how they work, and what you're seeing versus you know what's what's being what's being handled. And I'm going to turn the turn the pieces off one by one. Okay, so so okay when we have an object, you know if you if you, you call this a ball here, um, you know I'll just put little doodads on it like whatever. Okay, um, meaning just a sphere, good you know just a regular old sphere, and we have a light source. Um, there's a bunch of different components that are happening that are just simulating the real world. I mean, which is great because instead of a lot of fake stuff going on, there's there's simulation going on in a lot of ways. Okay, once again, light is just light is just energy coming out of a a, a point source um, or or any kind of light source, a square source, a you know whatever it may be. I'm just going to talk about a spot for this this little 
uh, demonstration, okay? And, uh, you know, just sort of a crash course, and, and the way the light works is, is what you're seeing is when you look at any object is the light that's not absorbed by the object, okay? So, you know, there, there's a whole, you know, spectrum of light that you actually see over here, you know, and it's, there's more, there's infrared and blah, 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 blah. But the visible spectrum is, you know, what you see that when you see a rainbow and this kind of stuff or whatever, right? And the, the deal is, is when light comes out of an object, well, it should be white. Oh, well, you're not going to see it. Uh, we're we're going to call our light yellowish right here. When light comes out of a of of a, a light emitting object and hits another object, whatever is not uh, absorbed by the object is what you see. So, you know, a red object is actually just an object that's absorbing all these other. It's absorbing all the green, absorbing all the blue, and giving you red on its surface. Okay. And this is where the light hits, okay? So we call it just like that, okay? And that's just the pure light hitting this in in one pass, meaning, you know, they go like this, boom, and and, and hit on that uh, on this face, okay? So this would be, we'll call this black because we'll call the rest of this. There's no, in fact, I'll just, I'm going to color. There we go. Okay, so... There we go. So this light is hitting this, and it's, and, it's, and it's bouncing off the object and hitting your eyes. The only thing that's not being absorbed is the red, so boom, the object is red, right? If the object was blue, it's, it's absorbing all the green, yellow, and red, and et cetera, et cetera, right? Okay. Now, this is, this is a perfect, an object that's perfectly uh, solid and, and, like I said, purely just bouncing the color off of that one surface that's on top of it you know uh, a rubber ball is a, a yeah it's it's not that's not even a great uh, a great example um actually no yeah rubber ball is not too bad because it, you know there's not a lot of reflection going on there there's none of that stuff you know happening there's there's just good old boom red coming at you okay now the other parts of the of what you see depend on you know as you might imagine whatever whatever the object is made out of right so you know there's there there's multiple components between there's there's reflection and there's um translucence right and right now we'll just talk about the this object is like i said a, 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 an extreme solid right so the what also is happening here is you know light energy bounces out off of objects that's why you're seeing it but also out onto other objects and that's why you know if you look at something very bright and and saturated you know you'll see leaked sort of pink light around it well, in this instance pink pink light around it because light is also going bing bang onto the ground here as well as the light that's going bing bang out at you at your eyes right so these things are all, all are computed for you, and you know, luckily, uh, for the most part, in Arnold, and, and this is something that, that's 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 been very hard and is getting easier and easier as, as time goes on, which is awesome. So, you know, ten years ago, this was an absolute nightmare because of all the 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 math that has to go on to bounce these, you know, bounce the little bits of this color off of that, and you know, because every object is is bouncing crap off of each other, and you know, how does all that work, and you know, all that stuff super compute intensive right you know luckily arnold is handling that and i'll show you how by just turning off some of that stuff okay so by default you get you get certain things so if i if i render this frame as is then what i'm doing is i'm turning off uh some of the extra bounces so here i'm getting like uh i'm actually getting still getting decent shadows but the, the light isn't actually interplaying in between here and in the other objects. This is a bad example because it's just chrome and, and black, so there's not a lot, uh, you know, there's not going to be a lot of bouncing uh, light off of, uh, or, or, yeah, bouncing light off of other objects. But if I throw, let me, let me just make one real quick. Make another little sphere. Bring it up here. And I'm going 
gonna make another surface, which if I haven't mentioned, we'll get we'll come back around to. Don't worry. Um, make another surface and throw it on a, on the object, but make it red as heck. Oh, there we go. Red as hell. Or sort of purpley, I guess, and throw it on the object. Oops, I lost it. Uh oh, there it goes. Okay, and I throw this on this object, and maybe we scale it up. So you'll see this light thrown around the scene. Now, once again, this happens in real life for free, of course, so when you photograph something, this all happens without you having to worry about it. But since the computer has to compute this this stuff, you know, it's just smart to be aware of it. So this is it off, and you know, something feels a little off. Obviously, you know, why isn't the red showing up here? Why isn't it on the ground? You know, and you know, that's what some of this that's what these guys do, and what we'll we'll talk about these in a different time. But transmission and specular are the things that throw those things around the scene. So if I turn them up and I, I do my render, you'll see eventually that, see this thing, this is what I mean by it costing, uh, you know, time because now it's got to compute all that light bouncing around and there's a little pink in here, should be a little pink on the ground. Not as much as I'd like. Oops. So lights bound, you know, our light source is over here. Oh no, where'd my light go? There it is. I just hid my area light. Uh -huh. There it goes. Okay. Just rotate it back in the scene. So this is that that uh, mapped softbox area light that I had before. So I'm gonna bring it in a little closer, and I'm gonna render this camera view. <laughs> so you know another another point about this is that you know this is the kind of stuff why you know you don't just constantly use a real time renderer to do these kind of things because the, you know these kind of computations take a bunch of time but they they add stuff into the scene that that you need I think my set might be too white mm -hmm. so I'm turning down the uh, ex the uh, environment light the big the big ball and I'm just gonna render with one uh, spotlight in the scene I should make it pop a little more So reflection, it, yeah, the reflection is a different part. I don't see a lot of pink down there. It should be sort of more this bright red when it comes to the floor. Transmission. Specular. Okay. Oh, you know what I think the problem is here is. Sorry, bear with me here for a second. I'm trying to uh, get the right surface on the floor. The floor isn't floor isn't bouncing the uh, surface very well. There we go. Let's try that. So these surfaces that I'm designing, I'm, I'm making them Arnold style instead of the style that they come in with from another program. And it should give us more of that. Yeah, there we go. So there, there, there's more of it sort of bouncing off the floor, and there's a little bit in here. And so, so that's your, you know, that's that component of of the light. Okay, so that's the stuff that's bouncing off of other objects, coming off of the light, bouncing off of the other objects, and onto other objects. Okay. You're, and that and that's what lights the scene. I mean, when when you have one light, that's that's why you don't get just you know this hard shat you know hard shadow right here and nothing underneath here because what's coming off the light is bouncing off the ground and illuminating under here, and that's where 
Um, where's my brush thing? That's where you know you would get stuff filling in through here, okay? And that's that's because it's bouncing off the ground object or whatever else you got to bounce off of onto the underside of the object. So you get stuff like this. Maybe that's a little like like that, okay? So if I come back here, you'll see that. So all this stuff, you see this light is all just coming, bouncing off the ground and coming and bouncing onto your object, you know. Um, all this light underneath there is coming down and bouncing off. So, you know, this is really, you know, the, the idea is just to be aware of these things because it's it, a lot of it's being done for you, but sometimes you need to mess with it. If you start to have problems and things don't, Aren't or aren't working out for you, you. You need to be able to troubleshoot this stuff. So, you know, this stuff is all being computed, and it can be turned off, and it can mess up. But it doesn't necessarily have to. But you need to be aware of it. And this is how these you know images are getting put together. Okay, so this is what leads us into talking about how our surfaces work. Okay, so we get how the light is happening for the most part. It's casting shadows. All this stuff is computed. That's why. If I come back to my, uh, that's why I'm getting this. This is all computed coming off of the light because I have one light out. You know, you know, we know where our light's at. This guy right here. Oop, nope, not that guy. Not that guy. This guy. Okay. Um, the so the light's doing its its part of the the computing here. Okay. Um, to make our shadows, to make our bouncing, uh, you know, bouncing and illumination coming off of other objects. And that's great. The idea, but the the next part of it is is you know designing the services to look like you know to you get you're getting your lights to look like you want them to look. Meaning this looks like a soft box, or the you know, the whole environment look like this other uh, the environment ball that we put in here. And after that, we have to start describing our. Whoop, there it is. We have to start describing our surfaces to the computer. The same way we have to describe the shapes. You know, and and say this is what a coffee cup is shaped like, and this is the hard surface and all that stuff. You need to tell it, well, this is whatever the surface may be. This is how it works, and that lead you know that leads us into materials. And there's you know tons and tons of different types of materials, and um, Maya and Arnold have its ways to you know, show you uh, or, or sort of uh, let you describe those things. Okay, and and it's all just about how light interacts with the material like like i just said you know light's just energy and what happens to it is what makes an image makes you see what you see and um and there's a bunch of different kinds so so um the most simple simple one is is what uh sometimes is just is called specular reflection or just called reflection and you know they, they go back and forth about what what they want to call that but it's essentially how much light is not absorbed and kicked off into a color towards you, but literally reflected of the ob you know reflected from the object, right? So when you talk about reflection, um, reflection d isn't just you know actual shininess that you might think of, you know that 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 you know uh, glass you know face has you know is highly reflective whatever um it, it all it goes all the way down to you know extremely diffuse reflections which means things like if i wanted to fake that or draw that i just get this okay meaning like like this right like this kind of deal so this looks like an ob well it kind of looks like an object that Here, let me clean that up. Uh, okay, so I'm I'm just gonna redraw this. So you know, so here's, you know, here's the base, and then I come in here, and I just do this light. Okay, so you know, this looks more like a, a matte object or like a, a a plastic that you know. Bear with me; it doesn't look that much like it, but you you get the idea that this is this is all diffused out, and you know, it it, it can actually be really really subtle so I'm gonna back it off oh get rid of it 
hello. Step back. Control Alt Z. Control Alt Z. There they go. Okay. So if I do this, so I'm just gonna really, really subtly put it in there. There we go. Like that, right? So believe it or not, when you look look at an object like you know, like uh, the, these desktops are a decent example, you know you're actually seeing a form of reflection okay you know even it may look like shine all the way down to depending on what your monitor looks like but the top of my monitor is oh um top of my monitor is, is very matte right so this is all just done through uh reflection okay and that goes from like i said these really tight actual reflections where you would see the object in the reflection, you know, like this would look like, there we go, this would look like this, so this is, so that's a really, really reflective object, right, where it's just a dot of, that's that's showing you this light right here, okay, all the way out to what I was just doing there with a big reflection that's just fuzzy, 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 ooh, like that, okay. So that's just what that's one that's sort of a major component of it, and that that's what gives us on this on the uh, the echo here. That's what gives us this stuff. Oop, shouldn't have already rendered. That gives us this stuff. This this is a you know this is a ref reflection that's just very diffused out. Okay, um, this is a reflection of this this object next to it because there's light bouncing off of it, and then bouncing onto the echo here. Okay, this is very reflective, so it's it's bright and 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 sh and uh, you know very sharp, really sharp, really bright because it's it's shiny, which isn't right. This is that part's not surfaced or something's going on there. Whereas the black is reasonably uh, set up. Okay. So we have that we have that that part and that that's really for most most types of objects that's the basic two things you need to worry about you know your your plastics uh, your metal you know is just some kind of a subsurface and a whole lot of shininess more than likely um, you know cloth believe it or not has a has a certain level of uh, of, of shininess that's extremely diffused. Um, Anything very solid, okay. Um, car paint is a bit different in, in that um, car paint is, is is a coated material, so it's actually, and and we uh, uh we'll, we'll they, my or uh, Arnold has its own car paint completely, you know, complete material that that handles all this stuff. But um, a lot of um, um, painted things are actually uh, multi-surface. They have a clear coat and they have an undercoat, which w w would be very, very sharp at the top. Like if I did another circle, you know, you'd get that sharp reflection, but underneath they may have weird colors in it. Um, you know, it may have like a thing that feathers out to a, a, even another hue, uh, that, that kind of action. That's because it's got, uh, it, it's actually composed of a, a couple of different uh, surfaces. There's a, there's a paint surface, then there's a clear uh, on top of it, which gives us the major shine, and then the light that goes through the the clear hits the underside and gives you color. Okay, so you get color here, you get shine from the top layer. Okay, um, and like we'll 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 play with that. Um, but then the other thing that that Maya can simulate, which uh, really or uh, which Arnold can simulate, which really does uh, um, some really cool tricks. Realism wise is actually uh, light that travels through an object. You know, a lot of your plastics, uh, you know, uh, you know, some toys and things like that are made of a plastic that that light gets through because it's it's semi translucent. Wax, you know, uh, you know wax candle. Uh, you know, light is traveling through this. You can see this is your light source. This. This is light traveling through the object. You know, you you can describe these things. You know, in in the past, computing all this stuff would be next to impossible. Arnold can do it um, fairly efficiently, and you can get exactly this. You can say where the light should, how far it should travel through the object, uh, where, where it should die. You know, being you know meaning it being absorbed, all this kind of stuff, right? And the 
major thing, the major feat that you use this this kind of thing in is human skin because human skin, um, you know, has translucency, obviously, uh, and controlling it is. Uh, oop, tree free, tree frog. Let me show you. Let's see here. So, so this is translucency. You know. Uh, be, uh, you see how the, uh, the, this uh, frog looks like candy. You know, human human skin uh, human skin works this way. <laughs> what? The first one you're talking. Frog baby? Is that what it the said? First, the first uh, suggestion from Google was human frog baby. <laughs> so, you know, if you get in here, you know, I mean, this is exact. You know, this is how skin works, and these these first layers, uh, you know, are extremely. Uh, translucent and they get less and less translucent and, and you know here yeah, this is translucency working its way through the skin light source is coming hitting here this is the reflection I was talking about this is the translucency I'm talking about you know Arnold can do all these things you just need to do the work to control it um, it can produce almost anything really because uh, oof, yuck good lord what the hell happened here <laughs> Human skin rug. Is this Etsy? Well, anyways, uh, whoa. Uh, so, anyways, uh, so th that's just a it, you know this is a it's a component of of surface surfaces and the way that light can travel through them and you know so Maya or God damn um, sorry Arnold along with Maya I guess you could say uh, you know can simulate all these things as long as you describe them properly okay and that's in that's in servicing and that and that's what we sort of have to do next because we've talked a lot about how to control our lights and how to light scenes and how to make the you know the, the the physical boundaries of the objects by you know modeling and making the objects now you go in and you say well this is exactly how i want my surface to appear and then you you, you stick the lights on it and you start to get images okay and we're just going to start to touch on this tonight because it's 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 a big it's a it's a big thing but i but since we've already talked about lights and i'm sure you got lights in your scene that you're playing with if you're playing around with this which i hope you are um you know you're probably not getting any surfaces that you like very much or you want to change them or start messing around with them and start getting stuff so um that's all done uh, for the most part i should say uh with Another editor, one of the you know many editors that you see here in the in the windows, um, in the uh, rendering editor is called Sh HyperShade. Okay, and HyperShade is um, where you you for the most part you design all these things, uh, you design your surfaces, um, and you get a, the the beauty is, is you get a really nice little preview up here. Um, by default, it's using hardware, which you want to change to Arnold. So this is basically a little mini render of um, of your surface on an object. And the great thing is, is it's actually in a in a little scene that you can move around. So what you're looking at behind here is a little HDR that they have back there um, that you can actually change to see what it's going to look like in context, which is really super cool. You know, you can say okay this is a light you know you can actually see what's going on here it's like an atrium or something and there's a plant and there's a big uh window and blah 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 blah. so this is doing like a little sub render and i can actually rotate it with normal uh there we go normal doohickeys uh normal uh controls like in your viewport uh, and you can even pan it around actually let me see if i can pause it pan it no can't pause it and pan it there we go okay so um so yeah, so up here you got your material viewer, um, which, like I said, you should switch to Arnold so that you're looking through the re renderer that you're going to use. You have your choice of how you'd like, wh what kind of object you'd like it on, which is really cool. So if you just wanted a, a good old sphere. <laughs> Hello. Sphere. There it goes. There's a sphere. This was the traditional one. They put it on a sphere. This, this shader ball thing is, the point of these shader balls is to show you both flat areas rounded areas um sharp uh you know filleted areas whatever you th this object tries to show you what your uh, what you know uh almost every uh type of surface 
meaning like you know rounded and flat and all that stuff you you may be a comp, uh, uh, encountering on your actual object right so this is just a bit you know this basic shape is just to try and show you that okay and you can choose uh, like I said you can choose all these and there's a whole bunch of them there's a teapot the the old school teapot kind of a new school teapot you can and then you can actually switch the lighting scenario so they have a, a, a whole bunch of them which are really great so um, there's interior color I think that was the uh, default here interior neutral which turns off the color if you're just concerned more about the, the how your uh, reflections are happening interior color 2 which will be another interior scenario there we go looks like an Ikea or something um, there we go and then exterior color and uh, one two one and two and uh, you can turn off the color on those guys too um, so these are the things that I just showed you you know these are the, the this background here is just an HDR uh, panorama just like this but they're they're um, you know outside and inside and they're uh, they come with Maya okay um, but you can actually even add your own if you you have a scenario where you you wanna you know uh, let's see uh, I can call it studio I think there may be a size limit let me see we're about to find out Oop, crap there we go texture so you close this file may be a little big for this I'm gonna I'm gonna find out so studio Hello. Oh no, it's not. Cool. So now I just I just threw that that HDR I have here into my little studio setup, and now I can actually test, you know, right here on the object in in this fake studio uh, um, panorama. Okay, I'm gonna get rid of this teapot. I actually like the shader ball thing. There we go. Okay, and I'm gonna go back to interior color. This is a little that uh, this. This interior studio is a little extreme. There's, it's too contrasty. So this is nice. So, okay. So um, materials are uh, your this this scene. These are all the um, materials in your current scene. This one has a bunch of them because this is this um, this um, Alexa or, or sorry the, the the these objects were imported from somewhere else. So see all this stuff. There's screens and all this stuff. So you know. You know, since they came from another object, you, you'll see that they're not the material type that we want. Okay, um, you see this fong. Remember, remember we talked a long, uh, long time ago. Is that when a, a new objects are created, um, they were called Lambert, uh, Lambert shader. Okay, so Maya creates a, a gray Lambert shader, throws on everything new, and that's the end of it. That's why we get all this gray, gray objects, right? So we have to change that um, if we want. Uh, to, to to control them using Arnold the, the the right way, right? So they can't stay that way. So you know you can go through here, you know, and try and make these work uh, by switching them over. And in my mind, it wasn't worth it here because I I imported these from 3D Studio Max. So you know I just grab my object that I know this is this is the bulk of it. That's that the black body of the Echo, like so. Okay. And I'll just make a new, make a new one. So, okay. So up here, these are all the ones that are in the scene, and you can um, you can drag them down. This is like your this is basically your work area, and you can have as many of them that as you want. Um, you know, we've talked in the past how Maya is, is node based and how things are just sort of wired together in the background. Um, this is showing you that how they actually are wired together. You can you see little literally little wires. Let me, let me turn this off. There we go. Uh, you see the little wires that are going from object to object. Okay, so this this is literally like I said, you know, these are the virtual wires that are happening between nodes. So this is a, you know a surface node, and then this is the 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 thing that uh, assigns it to the object, right? Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to grab that Alexa body, and over here this is your your create menu. Okay, so Maya has all these things, uh, all these uh, different types of both surface types for either its own render or Arnold or, or whatever. 
and lots of them are just uh, little extra sort of gizmos that that uh, um, do special things. So all we really need to worry about by default, see they, they have ones for texture, which we, we did by to, to uh, the AI image uh, is what assi I assigned to the light to, to give it a texture. Um, they have special ones for lights, which uh, you don't need to mess with right now. Then you have your shaders, okay? And there's a bunch of different types, but the, the really the basic one um, is called a standard surface shader, okay? Th this gets you most of what you need to do. And by, by clicking, so I went just, I'm in the Arnold tab. You see how we have three tabs here, favorites, Maya, Arnold. So this is all the Maya surfaces, which you don't, you know, probably won't need to mess with unless somebody forces you to use the Maya renderer, which they really shouldn't be doing because it's not great. Um, and then these are the ones specific to, to Maya. So every time I click this, I'm going to get a new shader and it's, and it's a um, assignment node, we could call it, right? So if I come over here and I zoom in, I'm just using the, my middle uh, mouse, you know, uh, you know, wheel, okay? You get wherever you you select, it's going to pop up over here in the uh, the editor. So this is your this is your property editor. This is where you sort of select them. You see how it's changing here? It's changing from four to seven. So I can just rename it. So I'm going to call it AI, meaning an Arnold. I don't know what A what they mean by that, but I'm going to call it uh, Alexa Blue Body. Okay. So now I have a surface surface called Alexa Blue Body, and to assign them, uh, the e one of the easiest ways, there's a, f there's a few different ways, of course, this being Maya, there's a bunch of different ways. Um, my favorite way is just to hold down your middle mouse button, drag, and and drop it on the object, okay? Um, another way is to select the objects that you want, come down, right click on your, your material, and, well, it's already on there, so it's not gonna do it, but um, and right click, and up here, assign material to viewport selection. So if you have a bunch of objects that you want to, you know, put that on, and you don't want to sit there dropping them on the objects, you make your selection, right click, assign material to viewport selection. Okay. Middle mouse button drag puts it on the object. Okay. All right. So if we come over here and and start working on our our surface. You can actually get rid of, you know, you can you can slide some of this stuff over and make it bigger, whatever whatever you want to do. The easiest way is usually to make your your uh, preview a little smaller so that you uh, it renders quicker. Um, and then it's just like the um, the IPR that we played with before, where you can pause it. That's what I've done here. That's how it's telling you it's red. That's what you know. That's how I know it's it's off now. If I turn it on, uh, turn that unpause it, it's it's rendering again. So. The major components that you have here are the ones that we you know we, we just talked about. Okay, so by default, this is, you know we 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 created an uh, an uh, a standard surface which is which is going to give us a base and a specular. Remember, we just talked about specular being that highlight that you see. You know these are specular highlights. Um, this is a specular highlight. A ref it's a, essentially a reflection, right? And you have to describe. These are, you know, these are specular highlights. This is a specular highlight. Same here, uh, and the inside is is, you know, in Maya, largely considered a uh, a specular highlight. So some pro some program or some renders have they split these th two things out and they call specular and reflection two different things. Um, Arnold here uh, doesn't. Okay. Um, which is kind of cool because it, 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 that's kind of what's happening here, and it's it, it's just easier to handle. So, so if I come in here and I say the 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 base is just the color that I was talking about when we painted this terrible illustration, you know, this is your quote unquote color of the object, the stuff that's bouncing out the object and hitting your eyes, and in this instance, hitting the camera, right? So if I said I wanted a blue, if I wanted to make a a blue uh, uh, echo. I go in here, I pick myself a blue, whatever you want to call it, maybe a dark blue, maybe less saturated, and you, st and you see what I'm getting up here. So I'm going to turn that weight down. There we go. So this is what I was talking about. This is blue coming in, hitting the object and bouncing off without a specular highlight or a reflection or whatever the hell you want to call it, right? 
so this is that that very very basic without without this shine without any kind of fuzziness here you know in a perfect world a perfectly not shiny object that's what you're going to get right so that's the sort of that's the first component of it okay and you can mess with the roughness which will actually sort of you know uh, make it even more uh you know makes it appear rougher literally um and metalness is is about you know literally about you know how much of this should be metal without a coat on top of it okay so you know you, you can do it this way by just bumping this guy up i'm gonna turn my so this is like a blue metal you know without a coat because that's where our, our, that's our next step our specular right so i'm gonna turn the metalness down come back here and i'm gonna rough this up a little bit and then we get to our we get to the second part which is the specular reflection that we've been talking about okay now now stay with me here because this is where it gets a little weird but what what you do is you're sort of mixing layers in arnold here and whoa what the oh sorry i just somehow docked this thing oh shit! there we go yeah, you can see i can tear all these things out there we go okay so so by you know to mix to mix in my specular reflection or you know reflection you know we're we're just going to interchange those words you add a weight and in theory you you actually do you want your you don't want to be adding one cuz these go from 0 to 1 okay and you don't really want to be adding 1 plus 1 because that's not the way that 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 uh the, the shaders really work and I think I'm just going to sort of uh we're not going to worry about that too much, but long story short is you don't want one plus one when you're when you're setting this this up, right? You do, you want to add a bit of blue or or your base color that we're that we're dictating here, and the specular highlight that we're talking about here. Okay, so I'm going to turn my specular highlight quite a bit up, but not too far up. Um, in fact, let me go get. I'm not working for. Uh, Amazon by any chance uh, or, or, or anyways it, this is just a good it's just a decent example and it's a it's something I had sitting around or the object I had sitting around so so we look at the actual object here um, you know if the if they made a perfectly like the uh, these other models here like see how shiny this the, the sides of the this model the, the the dot is right so you see how it's all sharpened through here and everything whereas this guy is you know the the matte plastic that we all you know that you see all over the place and all kinds of objects right so that's controlled by the roughness uh factor right here in in you know this the same way you have diffuse roughness for the diffuse color uh you have you have roughness for the uh the highlight and you see you know i'm getting pretty sharp um reflections of this environment here and i can actually turn it down and get extremely sharp reflections here okay so if you look online there there are some people that that um uh you know sort of log these things and say this is what i think the roughness should be for this kind of plastic blah 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 it's it, it frankly it's just a good idea just to figure it out yourself and 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 mess with it okay so if i bump this up you'll you'll see all these areas where light sources are reflecting are now diffusing out in as in a way that you might expect you know so if you watch maybe i'll make this bigger there we go so if you watch these areas as i as i bump this up it basically just fuzzes out as you might imagine you know because the the object itself is slightly slightly rough so all these light sources are just turning into these smooth highlights okay until you start to get to the point where you know they're they're you can't tell where one light source ends and another and they start to sort of mush together and they start to look like matte plastic okay um which is exactly what we're looking for so if i go out here and i render this because we put it on the object you know in the in the actual scene we get you know highlights that 
are diffused out. So instead of chromey and all that that you're seeing here, they spread out and they mush down and they they look like the plastic that you you know the plastic that this is made out of. Okay. Um, it's too bright blue, obviously. So you know you you look here and you can kind of see why this doesn't look so hot. So if I bump that down and I get a you know I get my color picker and I knock it down. Maybe turn the saturation up a little bit. Now, I'm, because I was shooting for like a dark blue echo. Do, 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 do. There we go. So there we go. So dark blue with with nice highlights, and it's about right. You know, it's it's uh, maybe a little too shiny, but you just mess with it a little bit, okay? And, and you you get where you're looking to go. Um, with with whatever plastic or whatever material trying to you're trying to get at, okay. So if I back off here, maybe we'll throw it on this again. So I'm gonna throw it on this ball too. Like, like I was saying, ooh, there you go. So when you when you uh, highlight an object in your scene, the ooh mercy, hold on. There we go. Um, the the uh, currently selected um, material will show up here and it will highlight itself. So if you ever get lost and you can't, you know, because these are really small, you can actually also find it in the list here. If I scroll down, let's see where to it go. It's going to be in the A's. There it is, Alexa Blue. So if I select that, hold down middle mouse button, drag it, and throw it on the ball, I can now render and sort of see. The balls in the scene are really handy because they, you know, when you put it on an object, even though that's that's nice to see it, you know, actually on the object, the ball doesn't lie. It sees everything. It, it, it you know, it goes in other directions and sees other lights that the object isn't seeing. So, you know, it's, it's always nice to throw a couple of, of these in the scene with the current materials next to them just, just to see how it's going to really behave, you know, outside the context of the object like this. So, you know... I can see exactly what it's doing to this light because there's the light in the scene and, and here's what it's doing to it, right? So you can see how this looks pretty good, but when you look at that it down here, it looks like it's a little too shiny. Um, you know, so I can bump that down. I can bump my I can bump my roughness up to get more shine. Or less sorry, sorry, less shine. And there you go. And you just play with it in the, you know, once once you set it up, you're all set. And you don't you know don't need to mess with it anymore. And luckily, you know you, you make enough of these. It's, it's you know you start to remember those numbers. Rubber looks like this. Cloth is way up there. And like I said, cloth actually has a bit of shine. It's just extremely extremely diffused. So you pump it way up into the sevens or eights or something like that, and um, and you get you know you, you get something that's right. So so this isn't bad. So you know I would leave this about here. But I really hate this blue. So I think I'm going to get rid of it. This is where I wish I had another monitor. There it goes. There we go. So I'm going to get rid of the blue. And just like this. So, okay. So another thing to uh, keep in mind here when you're making surfaces um, is to stay away from absolute black and absolute white, okay? Um, there are pretty much, there are almost no objects in real life that are that are absolutely, you know, something may appear black to you, but it's it's not, you know, no, nothing except very, very, very special objects are absolutely black or absolutely white. So, you know, always make sure you're playing, you know, somewhere in the, uh, like, 0.01 or, you could go a little lower, uh, call it point uh, uh, 005 we'll say okay which actually looks a little bit looks a little bit gray but you know like I said in reality it may look black it's not actually black black means an absolute lack of bouncing of light off of a surface of an object and it almost doesn't happen it's not it's almost not possible it, it, there, there are exceptions of course but no and no object that you're gonna want to make uh, in real life, right? And the same goes for the same goes for white. Uh, essentially, you know, this is what white should be. You know, if you you look around and you look at objects, oh, it appears white to you. Well, you know, put another object next to it that you think is white. Well, now that's white. Oh, this object is white. So, oh, always keep your values. You know, never just drag it all the way to the left or drag it all the way to the right. 
it, it's not right. Uh, you know, it, it just like I said, materials don't work that way. Okay. And the other part, the other part of the problem of making your object 100% white is how do you make an object that's 100% white that then you put a reflection over the top of it that you can't add 100 plus 100 um, and expect to see that, right? So if if you know if I wanted a white echo here and I went like this and pumped it up 100% and pump the weight of that, meaning how much of that I want that on there, and then pump my reflection all the way up, you know, my reflection starts to disappear because my object's already super white. It's super, you know, super bright. So you have to hold something back in both directions. That you, you you need to be able to have black, black for shadows. So, you know, once again, the, the, the desktops in front of us, the monitors in front of us, it looks like it's black, but it's just really, really dark gray or it's, you know, or just it's real close okay so anyways long story short is just if you don't if you don't push these so far down you won't have a problem if you need to mess with the colors after the fact and you're just sort of uh, it, it's just that's more it's just that's how uh, real surfaces work that's that's how you know uh, that's how the real world works and that's what we're trying to that's what they're simulating here you know so I'm gonna pick I'm gonna go back to black so I'm gonna put it right about here okay so now I have I went back to that. So now I have nice, very dark, not not perfectly black, but I'm still keeping that layer that's giving me my highlights here. So if, if I come back and I re-render, because I, I like the shine, I don't like the color at all, really. So there we go. So that's pretty good. So, so you see how you can you, you you play with that 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 number to give you all these different to take your sh your shine that comes in and 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 either smear it you keep it sharp smear it out. This is this is a perfect example. See if if you said okay this object is completely white, there's just no way to add in just a subtle the subtle sheen that you see. You know, between you know this, and you see the exact same sheen right here, real subtly. But if this was white, 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 one hundred percent, you couldn't add you couldn't add these things in. So, you know, all, all these white objects are are not a hundred percent white. You know, they're they're down there a little bit. Um, and then we'll go back here. You know, so this so this is a, a, a specular reflection that's that's tighter. Meaning, has less roughness. Let it go, and more. I mean, I'll put the color through there, so it's red-ish. So that's my surface color underneath. But you see how you know things start to essentially come into shape into, into uh, focus. You know. Um, and that's what you, that's that that's what you're doing here. That you know, see see how this is this is sharper than this because this is melty and there's a liquid surface. You know, whereas this is starting to diffuse out and it's actually kind of pockmarked and all that stuff. Um, you know, there's a lot of shine here. So these are you know, this is the shine coming off of this light source. So that's you know, there's lots of extra layers that you can do and be concerned about. But but that first layer. Of shininess that that you give your object is really what sort of uh, either makes it or breaks it, you know. And figuring that out because there, you know, there's lots of other controls here in this in this surface. It's, but how your object reflects the light sources in the scene make a, you know, it, like I said, it makes it or breaks it. To be honest with you, so um, it's good just to just to sort of keep you know to play with those either in you know on one of your object as a as a uh, in an interactive session or you know if you if you trust what you're seeing up here and, it, and it's pretty close you know but like you, like I was saying you see how it looks better when you put it in context with the lighting that that you're trying to get to um, but at the same time you shouldn't be tweaking your materials to match your lighting setup you, you know you at some point you you want to say well this is the right material and you want to tweak your light so there's a bit of an art form in, in between knowing 
what should be tweaked in the light and what should be tweaked here. The best case really, honestly, is to get it to work here because this is, you know, kind of an agnostic lighting setup, you know, meaning like, okay, if, if I don't like what I'm seeing out here, either I got, you know, like back here when it was blue, I might have too much light in the scene so I could turn these down because I wanted them to be dark blue or in this case, like dark red. So if I threw this on the object, I'll just throw it on everything. What the hell? Boop. Boop. There we go. So now everything should be red. It should reasonably match what I'm seeing uh, in the in the uh, hyper shade. Okay. Yeah. See, it's too too red. So I would probably turn my light source down because I'm getting and you know, what I'm seeing over here. Yeah. Yeah. It's a little bit red. Like this. You know. Yeah, a little bit of light. I could I could knock this down and it, and it'd be a little more matching what I'm seeing in the seeing in the uh, uh, preview right here. Okay, and that's why they make this. They make this thing so that you can try out different lighting scenarios and see, you know, is is this what you're looking for? You know, is this is this the way it should look? Should it look this dark? You know, so if you click through your lighting scenarios here and things still look good and the way you expect them to over and over. Um, then change the lighting in the scene because this is this is you, you could trust this you know if this this is what you're thinking of but this doesn't look right then I probably got too much light coming out of this guy or my you know my big environment is uh, too much okay so let's see okay so the last last thing uh, that we want to talk about here in the specular highlight is um, what you call Fresnel uh, reflections okay. Um, and that's done here through uh, you what's called your IOR, which is you called your which is an index of refraction. Okay, so every material type has what they call an index of refraction, and what that means is, as let's see, what's okay, I got to explain this right. So it's essentially the amount of shininess that occurs as a surface turns away from you okay and what I mean by that is if you look at a ball here you look at this ball and hello there we go sorry I'm trying to somebody's being a dick here come on this is why sometimes you need to either close hyper shade or, or put it on pause yes yeah, he okay so if I take this ball and I put it front and center like this, okay. Um, what that means is, and, and you can see this out in the real world a whole lot. Um, what that means is the reflection that appears on the sort of outside of an object versus this facing, uh, the faces coming at you, it appears to change. And, and what, it, what, what it's about is it's it's called micro facets and and what that means is objects uh that even appear shiny have just the like the microscopic little pits and valleys and all this stuff you know like like the shiny plastic that that I've got up here on this what whatever the heck this thing is you know it looks almost perfectly shiny but it's not because they're these little itty bitty like I said, imperfections and things like that. But as you go outwards away from the facing, the, 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 the part of the object that's facing exactly you, it basically adds up and gets, appears, I should say, appears to be shinier as it, as it goes, right? So um, let me see if I can, actually, there's a really great, uh, there's some good, examples of it that um, that show it as, as you change it okay so all you got to do is know this it's a piece of cake just memorize this right here it makes total sense to me n equals 1 and n2 equals 1.5 and you know no what, I, what I'm what I'm getting at is is if you look at this this is this is a, a famous one um, so if you look up here you notice how um, as this as this is looking 
if you look at the, this face is facing directly toward us, meaning like this part of the object, you know, if you if you if you look at its normal, which we talked about, it's coming right at you, right? So you notice how you don't see the reflection here, but as you head out towards the edges, you start to see this reflection, right? So this is a great example of something like plastic, right? Plastic functions this way, you know, uh, car paint, uh, clear coats somewhat function more in through here. Um, I, I actually like in the middle here for plastic, like 1.3. So do you see what I'm saying is that, that right here you don't see the re reflection that you see if you go over here. See how, see how bright this light appears reflecting in the object and this looks like metal you know it's got it's got that reflection that's that is, is coming right back at you these lights are going boom and, and right at you okay so these are all the same lighting scenario just the different index of refraction it's called okay plastic water they all you can look these all up online it's it's really easy to find glass blah 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 right okay um so by messing with that, you get a different look and a different behavior out of your reflections, as you obviously can see. You know, at 10, you're getting, you know, almost, you're getting pretty much chrome, right? Um, down here, you're getting, you know, a, a plastic with just a little bit of sheen on it because as it goes, you know, as it goes out towards the edge, you see it. You know, here, it's a little bit more, and et cetera, et cetera, 2.1, blah, 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 right? Um, like I said, for plastics, I like one, like somewhere in the 1.3 range. Um, even for clear coats, I, I like it there um, because it gives you just just the hint of, you, you always have a hint of reflection, um, but it, you know, it, this seems like too much to me. So anyway, so when, when I start a material here in Hypershade, I think the default is at the one, is 1 1.5. Oh no, I turned that way. Up. No, that's for that object. So if I grab my red material again, yeah, it's, it's at 1.52. And, and they're insinuating some kind of a, a plasticky surface here or whatever you want to say. Okay. So as I change this, you'll 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 see what I get out of this, okay? So I'm going to turn my roughness down so that, it, that I get really sharp reflections out of the object, as you can see here. Um, so I don't have that diffuse that I that we were looking at before. Um, so if I bring it down to say one, it, it it's gone, right? One point one. See, so I have I have reflection out in the outskirts, nothing in through here. It just, it looks odd, you know, it, it doesn't look quite right. 1.2 is, is in the middle, so you start to see if, it, if something is really bright. I don't know if this shows up on your monitors. Let me, sh let me turn the red up a little bit. Yeah, so you're starting to, starting to see some here. Like I said, 1.3 1, 1 has always been my favorite sweet spot for plastics because, uh, you know, this looks just about right. And if I put another, if I had another light out here, it actually would show up very nicely then you start moving into other materials and like i said you can you know looking this up is you know the, these numbers are out there these are these are not numbers that you necessarily have to guess at there these are scientific numbers and index of refraction um is about how much light is bent when it goes through a, uh, an object um like i said you you can you can find the index of refraction refraction of glass and water and blah 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 but there's little charts and you can just plug that number in you know, I, I like to just mess with it because half of it's just, it just doesn't, when, when you put in what they say is plastic, it doesn't look right to me. I, I, this 1.5, I think is too shiny. So, so anyways, you keep going and you keep going. And like they say, when you get up to 10, you know, you're, it's just reflection city, like everywhere. And, you know, it's out of control here. So it's, you know, absolutely refer, reflective. Okay. So. Just like we talked about with black and white, um, you never want to use too much reflection because um, it's also a thing that doesn't really exist pretty much. You know, they have like uh, mirrors inside, uh, you know, telescopes and, you know, Hubble telescopes and things like that that are 90% reflective or something like that or, a, you know, you know, even these super, super duper mirrors don't aren't 10 that that means pretty much a hundred percent reflective nothing is a hundred percent reflective so you know if you ever if you ever look and you see somebody's rendering and it's too shiny and stuff like that that's somebody that has bumped their their reflection way past what is physically possible so you know just 
once again, stay out, of, stay out of those high ranges the same way you stay out of absolute black, stay out of absolute white. It doesn't exist. You're making a material that doesn't exist and it, and it just doesn't make any sense, right? So um, if you if you play in the fours and fives, you know, three will be very shiny. I'm, I'm gonna top out at five here and actually do a render on the object, okay? So here's my echo with a super shiny. So you see what I mean? Like, see how bright these are? I mean, it looks like, uh, you know, looks like candy colored, you know, uh, fingernail polish or something. It just doesn't, it doesn't look right. I mean, it's just like, it's too bright uh, already. So I'm going to come down to three, see what that looks like. That may be closer. Okay. So yeah, so if you look around, I mean, that, like I said, I think this is a good example, but so if we, we go back to the objects that we were looking at before, um, you know, you, you can sort of see that. You see how, you know, where it's facing us, I mean, they could put a light source in here and you'd probably get that. What they're trying to do is a, a window coming in from this direction. Also notice how the light breaks up nicely. It's not perfectly straight. This is, this is either real or this is, this, this is probably real. So this is a photograph. Um, but you know, all these, the, the, the part of the object that's facing us often doesn't have a lot of reflect reflection because of that index of refraction of plastic. Okay. Um, here, you know, it kind of is, but they got a very, very, uh, a very, very bright light source can always overpower this. Um, but it, it, it should fall off. Okay. Um, let's see, uh, human skin, you know, uh, the facings would be, you know, like right here, but as it sort of just, as the, as the surface goes away from us, it, it gets shinier and more reflective. Um, you know, that's, that's why this is like this, you know, the index of refraction of skin, uh, you know, is more just, it's towards water really. So it's, it's, it's lower. So you, you have reflections that are up here and, you know, there is a light source up here, but the, this area right here doesn't have a shine on it because it's pretty much facing us. You know, you, you, you know, skin has that kind of, uh, index of refraction. Okay. Let's see if that's pretty nice. And you know, it's not, and it, it also skin's not super, super shiny, you know, I, or sometimes it's not, but oh, gross. Um, Jesus. And don't, don't randomly Google images. Woo. Um, so, uh, you know, a candle, you can see it here too. You know, like you see how that you get sharper shines on the outside, but in here where the, where the material is facing you, you don't see a lot of ref reflection because of the index of refraction. So it falls off as you go. You know, you can, like I said, you can see this in all kinds of, uh, a, a, another great example is, uh, is if you look at the ocean, right? And let me see if hopefully I don't see anything too gross. Um, so let's see. So, you know, a shot that's more um, above, trying to find one that's more sort of from above, you'll see through it because water, whereas, uh, whereas here, now since the water isn't facing us, we're kind of looking across the surface. It's very reflective because we're, you know, even though it's like flat, like a plane kind of here, we're, we're, we're seeing it, we're, we're seeing sort of the, this side of the, you know, this side of its index of refraction in the reflection, if that makes any sense. Whereas right here, since we're sort of looking down a little bit more, we can see through this part, but you see how this is reflecting more because if you if you think of this as a ball, this is the part that's facing you more because it's sort of underneath us or heading towards underneath this camera. But as we go out here, it gets very, very, uh, or it gets more reflective because that's how, you know, that's, that's how this water's working. Same here. That's how we can see through this because this is reflecting. This isn't, we're seeing through it and it's, it's just dark and murky. So we don't see much. Okay. So if you start looking around, you, you see this everywhere, you know, all, all these kind of surfaces do this because, you know, they all have the, you know, the, it, and it's dictated by the material, like I said, I mean, so like, 
like I said, if you just start looking around for this, you you almost can't not see it because it's all over the place. Take a take a sheet of glass, you look clean through it, right? Turn it on its you know turn it on its side, and it's almost it almost becomes mirror like. You know, if you start to um, rotate it away from you, it becomes more shine than not. Okay, and that's that's that 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 that's the Fresnel effect in in. In effect, uh, you could say um, that that's this happening um, because you you can sort of change that because you're sort of rotating the entire material. You know, here you could sort of think of it as uh, you're looking at it straight on, so you're almost looking through the reflection. Whereas as it rotates, you're looking at this part of it that's super reflective. Okay. So, anyways, to to come back, you know, to bring it back around to Maya, the the point is is that that all those surfaces have those index of refractions that you that you pump in here and you can either go off of the real deal by looking it up and maybe tweaking it i mean that's a good way to go especially when you're just sort of starting to figure this stuff out um or or sort of playing with it with the idea of not going too high and not going too low okay um it, it all matter it all matters you know what what both you're trying to do and how physically accurate you want to get um so, um, so yeah. So like I said, I mean, my 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 favorite for a lot of materials is to start out at one point three, which I, I think is somewhere in a nice plasticky realm, um, and uh, it works really nice for like I said, car clear coats and and things like that, right? Um, the next the next part that we're the last part we're going to cover here um, is. Uh, Depending on how you want to pronounce this, uh, it's called either anist anistropy or anistropy, anistropy, I've heard it called. And what that is, is, um, let me just find you a nice example again. Uh, because what it is, is it's the way that uh, surfaces that are like brushed and things like that, this is a perfect example, right? Like since since this this end is sort of spun and you can kind of think of it as sanded. See how these bands like you don't it doesn't just reflect. Like there's a light source up here somewhere and the little scratches that are in here are reflecting it, right? Same with this and there's another light source probably down here or it's the ground and they're reflecting in the little scratches here, all right? There's another one. You know, uh, you, uh, the way you can think about it is almost like uh, sat. You know the way that some satiny materials work, and hair actually works this way too. Because what it is is these little tiny, once again, little tiny scratches, or in the case of hair, just a whole bunch of hairs going in a direction that catch light in a weird way, right? And this is fake. This is a fake, and it's it's not really. You know, it, it's just a fake essentially. But what you can do with it is if you if you turn it up. And usually got to turn your this up a bit. Uh, oops, come on. Uh, tops out at one. It'll smush those highlights, and you can actually rotate them. So, um, like I said, this is a pure this is pure BS. It's pure fake, but you know it, it gets the job done. So, like this highlight. You can. That's where the rotation comes in. So by turning on anistrophy or, or turning it up, you're squishing those highlights into, into these little sort of uh, cones. You could call it right. Um, and then you can rotate them into place. It's, it's like I said. It's utter BS. It's not a simulation that you would really want or, or whatever. But it, like I said, it, it gets the job done. So I can rotate this. I'm going to turn my let's see roughness maybe up just a tad. And this should rotate my highlights. It's it's a strange thing, it, 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 because the thing is, you don't really. It's it's kind of a relic, but it, because it's like they have better hair renderers nowadays that that would just handle all this. So there's no reason for you to fake that. And you know, CDs work that way, but who who that renders CDs anymore? You know that that kind of thing. So it's kind of a you know it, it's there, but it's it, number one, it's BS, and number two, it, it doesn't really look right anymore. So you know, proceed with caution, kind of thing. You know. So let me get this out of the way. There we go. So the really last part that I want to show you, um, 
in the hypershade here and just as a quick refresher uh it's in rendering editors hypershade it's this little dot um i don't think i put this there uh do you guys have this on yours who who has this yeah it's already there okay so that's already there so you mash that and you get the hypershade which is uh, another uh, program's called a uh, material editor or whatever they're all they all do the same thing you're in there describing surfaces okay um the nice thing with um, Arnold is it comes with a set of presets, which is nice. So you can actually kick things around without designing your own, but I would definitely design your own. So if I hit presets here, here's here's um, its default presets, which are neat because you can sort of turn, you know, get them, turn them on, and then just sort of kick them around and, and see what the settings they put in there as. So if I if I go down to wax and I hit replace, so I got purple wax for some reason. So this is what uh, you know whoever. Is designing materials for Autodesk thinks uh, wax should look like. Um, I'm gonna get rid of this weird purple or pink or whatever. I'm gonna turn that down. Okay, so what they've said is the roughness should be at about four. The index of refraction of wax is about 1.52, and they've turned their weights way up, which is a little weird. Um, and there, you can actually color your reflections too, but uh, you know, usually you don't need to do that unless you know gold has colored reflection reflections. Um, so you know, you do need it for those kind of things, but usually you can leave it alone. So I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna apply this guy to my things and see what I get. Apply it to the body here. You who there, assign a material. Sorry, something's bogging on me. There there we go. Okay. And hit render. <laughs> so these like I said, these these are presets that you can go in and you can you can you know, experiment with, or they're a good launch, you know, starting off point, or, you know, whatever. Okay. It's okay. I don't, I don't think it's that great. I don't know who the heck made these, but, you know, there's car paints. Uh, let's see. Oof. Yeesh. I haven't played with these because a lot of the, you know most of these are new. They they had you know Maya had its own and now they have these Arnold ones in here. I'm not sure these are so great. Oh yeah, this is okay. So what they're saying is they're leaving their their index of refraction up there too at 1.5. Um, hold on, let me see what else they got here. We'll we'll talk about these other options uh, next time because um, there's a whole lot to it but uh you know we we wanted to go because these are the most important ones for for sure so you know it's it's good to cover those balloon blood glass gold ooh gold oh so they have a roughness on there um they have their metalness at 100% because it's metal oh that's not bad ooh Man, blingy. Okay, so, um, so this is pretty nice. The, the gold is pretty nice. So you see what they've done here. Their metalness is up because it's metal. So they're doing most of their reflex reflection, you know, up here at their base because that's how you know that's how gold and these kind of objects or th these kind of uh, substances work. Is that you know there's not a lot to look at on gold besides reflect re reflection. You know. Um, gold chrome all that stuff you know what you're seeing is not the surface you're seeing the the appearance of the surface the, the the what it's reflecting in the scene and how it's reflecting it so all they're saying is it's 100 percent metal it's it's got a gold color of course because it's gold um and they're putting another uh shine on top here that's uh that's giving you this stuff see so um a, another reflection that's uh probably got a little yellow in it so it's got a little yellow in it even even in these reflections so the base color that's all all this stuff is coming from this top reflection that you get out of the metalness and they're adding a little more in there and they really like this 1.5 or uh, 
0.1. Oh, oh, they roughed it up a little bit here. So, so it's got a little bit of, uh, you know, because it's not 100% shiny. That's why you get these little, these little, uh, you know, extra shiny bits, you know. So, so if you run through the pre presets, they're, they're a nice way to kind of uh, see what, oh, God, what is that? They call this chrome. It's horrible. Well, a good a good way you could play with them, and you could see which ones suck and which ones don't, and and maybe learn a little something of why. Like I don't know why. There we go. Anyways, why the why these things have uh, have these things. So, so yeah. So they have a series of pre presets up here that you can play with um, and try and design some of these things. So you know the, these first two two sets of uh, of settings between your base and your specular will. Uh, do most of the heavy lifting on most objects when you look around. It's usually a color with some kind of shine on top of it. It's just that simple, you know, like like most most things are made this way. There's, you know, the color can be done in different ways. You know, right now we're just applying, you know, uh, just regular, just a color. And, you know, we'll, we'll get into how to mess around with that later, but like many, many objects are just, like I said, a color with some kind of a sheen on top of it, some kind of a shine, whether it's, very shiny or not shiny at all or you know whatever like I, when one thing i was talking about there is uh, is cloth you know if i if i turn my metal this I, I took this chrome and if i bump my roughness way way up and i'm going to go in somewhere in the middle first I'm, oh so there's a there's my shine i'm gonna keep my index of refraction where it's at i'm gonna bump my metal this way up you'll see it's like when it goes to do the render so it's there. You see, you, you see how this is like, you know, like I said, it's clothy. It's like, it's almost like clay, right? You know, like, like this is the way that cloth actually works. That's where you get the, you know, that's why, you know, cloth has a, you know, it has highlights, but they're just so diffused that, you know, they, they barely register, but they're back there, you know? So it's like, this can do all that heavy lifting for you. Oh God, I think I just docked it again. No. Um, even when it's just, you know, instead of trying to figure out like, you know, you know, how much shine, you can just sort of mess with it. And you can see just how, you know, how diffused, you know, clay, rocks, all that stuff. You may not think that they have much reflection on them, but but it's there, you know. So uh, that's why you, you you bump these kind of things up. So that's the, like I said, that's the kind of the, the basics of, of, uh, of surfaces, you know. So we've talked a lot about lights and, you know, and, and, you know, how to sort of put them in there and then how, how you can use them. And now it's sort of like the next step is what the surfaces need to look like so that the lights that we're throwing in the scene, the two of them go together and you get, you get the right images. So, um, that's, that's, that's the basics of it. So the hyper, if you have any questions about hypershade, please let me know. There's a lot in here, but, but definitely kick it around. Um, luckily a lot of it, you can ignore that, you know, you can, you can get around here and, and look at all your stuff. Um, uh, look at all your current materials really easily. Um, there's organizational things. If you click these guys, they'll they'll expand. And uh, I'll, I'll go through these next time. Actually, I, I probably should have done that. But there's organizational things to kind of get them to uh, you know clean up and all that stuff. But um, that's the basic gist of it. So try making some surfaces. Try throwing them on your objects you've already created because more than likely you got them around your house or you actually still have the pictures. Play with the uh, reflection levels. Play with the uh, uh, the index of refraction and the roughness of those objects, um, and see what you get out of it. Especially if you just look at uh, look at the objects you've made. Like I said, you know we've we've all got a pile of objects we've made. Try and make the surfaces for them. That's the next step. Okay, and that is uh, that is all of it for today. So thanks for listening, and uh, I'll see you on Wednesday. Oh, and by the way. Um, anybody who's watching these, you know, if you have questions as you're going through them, um, you know, I know a lot of people want to get out of here and stuff like that. But if you have questions, please email me. You know, I get my email all day. If you're, if you're watching it at home, I'm happy to answer questions. Um, and I'm usually on my email all the time. So if, you, if you're playing with something, don't waste a lot of time trying to figure it out. Just, just email and I'll, we'll try and figure it out. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. See ya.